Good morning, Acton, and welcome to Java with John, hosted by Town Manager John Mangirati. Java with John streams every Friday morning at 10 a.m. on Acton TV's YouTube channel. You can also listen live on the radio at 94.9 FM. Tune in weekly for important information from the Town Manager, Health Department, and Council on Aging, as well as a variety of special guests. Residents can contact us with questions or comments at 978-929-6611 or email manager at actonma.gov. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the February 26th Java with John program. Uh, we're getting started a minute late. That's my fault, but uh, we're very excited. We have a lot of uh, interesting guests for you this morning. So uh, I'm going to be very brief with my comments and we'll get right to the good stuff. Uh, just to let you know who's going to be talking with us today, we have Michelle Holmberg, who's uh, from the Cooperative Elder Services, who's moving into our 30 Sudbury uh, lower level. We have Sharon Mercurio, uh, Council and Aging Director, Danielle Saban, our Director of the Memorial Library, Heather York, Public Nurse uh, and uh, Pandemic uh, Fighter. And uh, we have Ashley Lawler, who, who's a teacher at McCarthy Town. And one of her students, Felipe Betancourt, who's going to talk to us and uh, give me a hard time, I think, in a little while. I'm looking forward to that. So why don't we get, um, so just a few updates. Um, this is the last weekend of February, uh, this weekend. And Monday night is a big night for me. I'm presenting the town manager's recommended budget and capital plan. So I hope you can watch that. It's going to be uh, at the selectman's meeting at um, 7 o'clock on Monday. A lot of other exciting things are happening uh, in the community right now. We have a one of our first of two diversity workshops for all staff this afternoon uh, and then again on Tuesday. And we're excited that volunteers in the community are also going to be attending uh, that session or one of those sessions. Uh, so, you know, you've, you've probably saw the, the news. Uh, Governor Baker's made a lot of announcements over the last few days. Uh, locally here, we've been working very hard to try to get uh, our folks vaccinated. And I'm, I'm going to kick it right to Heather, our director of nursing, to talk about all the great work she's been doing with members of our vaccine team and other stuff happening related to the pandemic right now. Good morning, Heather. Morning, John. Good morning, everyone. It's nice to see you again. Um, so the numbers in Acton right now, as of yesterday, are 766 overall positive COVID cases, and we currently have 27 residents um, in isolation. Um, John mentioned our work uh, for immunizations. So we have done a very small number of seniors in Acton. Um, with the state giving out uh, vaccine to us. Um, we are trying to regionalize with the towns of Wayland, Burlington, Lincoln, Lexington, Bedford, Concord, Carlisle, and Sudbury. Um, by doing this, we're hoping to get more vaccine allotted to us. Unfortunately, I'm sure everyone has seen the news um, and most of the vaccine is going to the mass vaccination sites. And we're trying to hopefully get some of that uh, or more uh, exclusively into Acton so that we can give um, our residents um, the vaccination. We are you know, suggesting obviously, since there is such a, a, a small amount that we're getting, please continue to make your appointments where you can, um, because it is so important to get vaccinated at this point. Um, as John also mentioned, Governor Baker did um, do, is advancing our opening plan. So Massachusetts will be advancing to step two of phase three on Monday, March 1st. Um, he also announced that um, their plan is to transition to step one of phase four on Monday, March 22nd. Um, and this is due to the decline that we've had since the holiday season where we were over 8% positivity in the state and we're now under 2%. So that's really good news as we can move forward so what that includes is phase three, step two, um, is for indoor performance venues, such as concert halls, theaters, and other performance spaces will be allowed to reopen at 50% capacity with no more than 500 persons. Indoor recreational activities with a greater potential for contact, things like laser tag, roller skating, trampoline parks, et cetera, will be allowed to open at 50% capacity. Um, capacity limits across all sectors um, will be raised to 50%, and that number will exclude employees being counted into that mix, which that's been um, 
something new in the past two um, releases of, of uh, capacity limits, sorry. Um, restaurants will no longer have a percent capacity limit, but will be permitted also to host musical performances. They still have to keep six foot distancing. The tables are limits of six people per table. And then that 90 minute time frame um, for restaurants is still in effect. So that hasn't changed. Um, but if their spacing allows for more diners um, with that six foot spacing as opposed to a percentage limit. Um, residents have to continue to wear masks to prevent the spread and are encouraged to avoid um, contact outside of their household still. So that's still a recommendation. The gathering changes for phase four, which um, will potentially start March 22nd, as long as numbers stay where we are and, and or lower, which would be great. Um, so that will include um, some industries will be permitted to open with a 12% capacity limit. Um, they have to submit their plan to the Department of Public Health. Those include indoor and outdoor stadiums, arenas, and ballparks. So that's good news, um, you know, as we start opening and doing more things um, in the community, um, we can get start getting back to what our lives were about a year ago or a little over a year ago. Um, the other effect uh, for March 22nd is the venues for public settings will increase to 100 people indoors and 150 people outdoors. And then outdoor gatherings at private residences and in backyards will remain at the maximum of 25 with indoor house gatherings remaining at 10. Um, so those those folks that are planning weddings um, will now have the ability to have more people at their at their gathering, um, which is good news. Um, also at these locations, dance floors will be permitted at weddings and other events. Overnight summer camp will be allowed to operate this coming summer, which I'm sure um, all the kids will be very excited about. Um, exhibition and convention halls may also begin to operate father, following the gathering limits and event protocols um, and other phase four sectors must continue to remain closed. So keep your eye on those um, updates from the governor. Hopefully the numbers will stay um, where we are or go lower now that people are being vaccinated. Um, so this is really good news as we move forward to our, our new normal coming up in the spring. Thank you, everyone. A lot of good news in there, Heather. Um, you know, we've been talking to you every week and this is, I think, uh, one of the more optimistic, uh, not, not your fault, but this is one of the more optimistic reports we've seen. Uh, so that's very encouraging to hear. Uh, we can dance again and uh, all the other things that we'll be able to start doing uh, that we used to enjoy. So um, in the town manager's office, I've been working here for a few years and we get letters, we get emails, we get phone calls. Uh, every once in a while, uh, someone writes a handwritten letter, uh, and that happened earlier this month. I received a letter from a student uh, at McCarthy Town, and it was uh, very inspiring. It was something that's very important to me. Uh, he asked me what, uh, why Acton doesn't have a mayor and uh, what the difference is between a mayor and a town manager and asked if I ever did speeches. And so those are all really good questions. And so I said, you know what, we got we to get uh, this student uh, in front of us. So uh, this morning we have Felipe Betancourt and his teacher, uh, Mrs. Lawler. And uh, Felipe, uh, any other questions before I get into the, to the ones you sent along? How are you doing today? Um, I actually have a couple more questions. Like, what's your favorite, what's the, what's your favorite part of your job? And what's one difficult part of your job? Uh, those two things are the same. It's working with people. Uh, that's my favorite part, and sometimes that's difficult. Um, so let me ask you something. Are, are you supposed to be in school right now? Um, it's at my, my class is actually at 1020. Oh, all right. Well, we'll get you out of here in eight minutes. We don't want you to miss class. Um, so were you, what's this book that you were reading that, that made you think about what a mayor is? Um, it was a book about a town that was like, 
lot, very colorful and stuff. And I just got wondering about like why acting does not doesn't have a major and the the questions in the letter. So, uh, so I can answer that for you. So acting is a town. And there's, you know, all throughout the, the state and the country, there's different cities and towns. You know, the city of Boston is a, is a big city. They have a mayor that is elected by the people to run the city with a city council. In smaller towns like Acton, uh, we have a board of selectmen, which are elected uh, by the residents to be the chief policymakers for the town. And then the board of selectmen hire a town manager to, to run the town on their behalf. So my position is a little bit like a mayor. Uh, but it's very different in the fact that I don't get elected, I get appointed. So that may not mean a lot to you right now, but um, it's, it's a really good question and I, I appreciate it. And you asked earlier if I make speeches, I do make speeches. I'm making a very big speech on Monday night. I'm presenting the budget for how the town is gonna use all the, the resources that we have next year uh, for the coming year. And it's a great opportunity for, for me to talk to about all the great work that we do here as an organization and listen to the the Board of Selectmen and the public about any input that they have about that process. Um, do you ever do speeches? Um, no. Um, well, maybe your teacher uh, can have you do a speech. What would you say if you were going to give a speech? Um, it depends what it, what it was about. It would be about. Do you ever, do you ever play sports? Um, yeah, I go skating sometimes. What if you were going to give a speech about skiing? What would you say? Um, do you wear a helmet? Yeah. Good job. <laughs> do you go on the chairlift? Not yet? I don't think so. Felipe said he goes skating. Oh, skating. Oh, I'm sorry. Mrs. Lawler, is there anything else I should uh, ask uh, Felipe? Any, anything else on your mind? What's going on at McCarthy Town today? Are you supposed to be in school? I am How in school. you're not in school? We're on the two cohort model. So first half of the alphabet comes to school Monday, Thursday. That's when I see Felipe in person. And we okay. have second half of the alphabet on Tuesdays and Fridays. So that's why Felipe is at home today, but he's Zooming in five minutes. Oh. <laughs> Good. Well, um, Felipe, are there any other questions you have for me or from some of the other uh, guests we have on the program um, this morning? I got um, one last question for you. Okay. Have you always lived in Acton? Good question. No, I've never lived in Acton, not even for a day. Um, I grew up in Attleboro, which is a city uh, not too far away from here. And I live now in Westford, which is right next to Acton. Um, okay. How long have you lived in Acton? Acton? Um, two years. Two? And you yeah. like it so far? Yeah. Good. How, is your, how's your teacher? Is your teacher good? Yeah. Yeah, good teacher? Yeah, yeah. that's good. I'm glad to hear. All right, well, any other, do any of our, any other questions or, or are we going to let you back to the class? Um, uh, probably going to need to go to the class soon. All right, well, listen, you can come back anytime you'd like. Uh, it was really nice to talk to you this morning and, and thank you very much for writing me this very thoughtful letter. Um, I will still respond to you, but I thought it'd be fun to respond to you in, uh, uh, live on the radio. So now you can tell your friends you're on the radio and TV and live streaming on YouTube. So the, tri triple, ca the triple cast. So thank you very much. We'll take, take care, bye. Ashley. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for so, having me. Have a good day. Enjoy school. You too. <laughs> so, um, as I mentioned, we're uh, we're live here on radio, and we are taking any questions that folks have. If you want to call in, 978-929-6611, and we'll uh, continue on with the program. I believe that we are going to the Council on Aging. Uh, Sharon Mercurio is our Director of Council on Aging. She's also a key part of our vaccine task force, who's been working very hard over the last few weeks. Sharon, what's happening? Hi, John. Thank you. Tough act to follow. Thanks Sorry. for putting me right yeah. after Felipe. <laughs> <laughs> so um, as, as Heather and John said, we're working really hard to try to get vaccines more um, local for our, our seniors. We hear you. We hear your frustration. We're here to help um, and advocate for you. So 
If you need a hand, um, please call us 978-929-6652. Also wanted to remind people that we do have an interest form both on the Acton COA website and on the town website. And what that is, you can sign up and if vaccine becomes available, we can reach out to you or we can reach out to you and give you an update. Um, on the flip side of that, if you have signed the up on the interest form and have received your vaccine elsewhere, if you could just contact us and we'll remove you from that list, that would be really helpful. Um, you know, as Heather said, we've only been giving very limited uh, doses. So we prioritize from that interest form, starting with our oldest residents and, and working our way down. So um, it, takes, it takes a little time, a little patience, um, but we're here to help you. Um, what we have going on at the Senior Center this week, we have book discussion group on Wednesday, uh, March 3rd at one o'clock. The book we'll be discussing is The Dutch House. On Thursdays, we have computer class that happens throughout the year from one to 2.30. Ken LeBeau, one of our fabulous volunteers has been teaching that for years now. Um, been working very closely with Cheryl Ball and Shana. We received a grant working on social isolation um, that we got actually before the pandemic started. So really good timing on our part because our worlds have been turned upside down. So we've been trying to initiate different programs via Zoom just to keep people engaged. Um, so some of the programs coming up for March, we have psychological first aid surviving the coronavirus. That will be March 9th at 11 o'clock. We have self, uh, safety and well-being for seniors and D District Attorney Marion Ryan will be um, doing that broadcast for us. So giving you some uh, tips and you know it's wonderful because she's really on the front lines and hears the most recent scams and, and what people are doing to try to take advantage of our seniors. So um, that will be a great program. And then a program that we had tried to get going um, before we closed down was with Ted Reinstein doing New England road trips. So it's kind of the new New England road trip, no mask, no gas. Um, so that'll be March 30th at 7 p.m. Um, you can sign up for those. There's a link, so you need to register to get the Zoom link. Um, that's in our newsletter. And if you need assistance, just give us a call or give Cheryl Ball a call as we're doing this together. We've also been getting a lot of questions about tax um, assistance because in the past we've had AARP volunteers that have been fabulous working with us and helping us get folks um, getting their taxes filed due to the pandemic. They're not doing that at this point. So um, we are giving people some, some private companies if you need assistance. The IRS also, irs.gov has a self-filing option they're also available to answer questions that you may have. Um, at this point, we have not heard that the tax date's been extended. So we're just hoping they extend it and um, we might be able to, to move forward a little bit with assisting people more in person, but at this point it is not happening. Um, that's it for me for today. Thanks, John. Thank you, Sharon. And thanks for all your work helping um, our residents access vaccines. How, if you had to guess, how many phone calls do you think you and your team have made uh, outreach outreach related related to vaccines? Uh, probably about 500. Good. Well, thank you. I know that's appreciated uh, and uh, keep up the good work. Thank you. Uh, so um, our next guest is Danielle Saban, the director of Memorial Library. The library has been closed for most of the last year, but the library staff is still working very hard to push materials out to our residents and doing all kinds of other interesting things. So Danielle, what's, uh, what's the latest? Good morning. Thanks for having me on this morning. So um, as I'm sure a lot of you know, we still have uh, on-demand curbside pickup. So if you've been placing holds for your materials during this time, you can come to the library um, be uh, be on Mondays through Saturdays between 1030 and 530 and Sundays from two to five. You give us a call, you tell us your last name and your library card number, and then a staff member comes outside to leave your materials on tables in the front entrance. Um, besides that, we do have a couple programs coming up that I wanted to mention. The March book discussion meets on March 16th and is discussing Deaths of Despair and the Future of Capitalism by Anne Case and Angus Deaton. We have copies available for you to reserve. 
you must register to get the link to the Zoom meeting. You can do that at our website, www.actonmemoriallibrary.org and clicking on the calendar. If you have any trouble with that, you can call us 978-929-6655. Um, we have another program on Zoom in mid-March and it's called Organic Gardening for Everyone. It's gonna be on March 17th at 7 p.m. And uh, we'll have naturalist John Root offer practical advice and inspiration to gardeners of all ages on growing vegetables, fruits, herbs, and fl flowers organically. And again, you have to register for that program in order to get the link to the Zoom meeting. Um, we also just launched a program called All Our Voices to encourage patrons of all ages to read materials that amplify underrepresented voices from authors with diverse backgrounds. Staff have created reading lists from different uh, for different age groups. And um, you can check out those reading lists and perhaps read some books from there. And you also have the option to track your reading through a uh, program called Beanstack. So you can read a book, log in and Beanstack, and then you'll get a virtual badge to say, hey, I read a book from this category in the Act in All Our Voices reading program. Um, and then the last time I was on Java with John, John, you asked me what was the most checked out book of 2020, but I believe 2020 hadn't ended yet. So now I finally do have those numbers for you. And I was wondering if you wanted to give a guess as to what you think the most checked out book was. Hmm. Um, Moby Dick. Well, we actually had a tie. There were two books that were checked out the same number of times. Uh, they were called uh, Where the Crawdads Sing and American Dirt, and um, they're both checked out 70 times each the past, uh, all during the calendar year of 2020. And then um, surprisingly enough, the book that came in third is The Dutch House, which the uh, Sharon mentioned the um, senior book discussion group is reading. And that one was checked out 67 times. Um, I have not read that one, but uh, I, I read Where the Crowd Dads Sing and I liked it, that, and so it makes sense to me why it was so popular but it's always fun to look at those numbers. So that's really interesting. I guess that's a question I have. So if you have a book that's popular like that, do you have one copy of it? Do you have five copies of it? How does that work? No, when we see a book is really popular like that, we try to get as many copies as we can to make sure uh, you don't have to wait a really long time to get the book. So you can see um, if a book was checked out 70 times and there's only 52 weeks in a year, it sounds like we had more copies. Um, those particular books, we probably had at least five and maybe a few more. Um, we feel like uh, that kind of can go through the reserve list mu much quicker than if we only had one copy. Very interesting. Well, thank you. I look forward to more uh, stats and figures about uh, library circulation uh, when you come back on. Great. So thank you very much and keep up the good work. So our next guest is uh, one of our newer businesses uh, that have located to town uh, recently. I believe they weren't in town before, but now they're right as part of the uh, dynamic uh, operation we have over there at 30 Sudbury. We have uh, our human services group that's on the uh, main level and now there's a new uh, business on the lower level and that's Michelle Holmberg's group, uh, Cooperative Elder Services. Could you please tell us what services you're providing, Michelle? Nice to, nice to see you this morning. Thank you for having me. Yes, I'd be happy to. Um, so we're a nonprofit that operates adult day health programs in Massachusetts and our latest program that's going to be opening up uh, in the next couple of months is going to be at 30 Sudbury Road. So uh, adult day health programs are opportunities for folks to age in place for as long as possible. We're really focused on giving people a place to go during the day if they need a little more support and structure. Um, and then returning home at the end of the night to loved ones, um, significant others, whatever home might be, but we're trying to divert people out of nursing homes uh, for as long as possible. And so you, you're moving in now, when do you think you'll be set up? We're hoping early in April that we'll be able to open up. We are um, at the mercy of regulatory bodies at this point, but uh, we have our fingers crossed that in the next several weeks, we'll be announcing a formal open date. And then you're, are you starting from scratch, so to speak, or do you have uh, clients already lined up that will be coming there? We have folks that will already be joining us. So we did have a program that was open in Concord. And so this is going to be technically considered a move. And we're just really 
thrilled about the space we're going to be moving into, um, not the least of which because we're gonna be right around the corner from the human services folks here in Acton, certainly Sharon and her team with the COA. Um, the new space will increase capacity for us from our previous location. Uh, it also allows a lot more sunshine to come in. We're gonna have better parking and it's a lot easier to find than where our last location was. So what, what exactly is, is an adult day health program and how is that different from what we do at the senior center upstairs? That's a great question. So we work with individuals that need um, more support during the day. So medically compromised individuals, uh, a large percentage of the folks we work with on any given day will have Alzheimer's or another form of dementia, for instance. So they're people that um, need a little more assistance and eyes on them. So there are three components to an adult day health program. There's the nursing oversight piece. We always have licensed nurses on staff from the minute we open to the minute we close. We have our therapeutic recreation program going on throughout the day. So we're tailoring an activities program to be failure free so that regardless of why someone might be joining us, they can participate in every activity we have going on. And then the last component is our service coordination. So providing support to caregivers, making sure we're connecting with other providers, uh, doing whatever we can to help support folks. Lately, a lot of that has also been trying to help people navigate this system of signing up for COVID-19 vaccinations as well. Great, so um, is, there, is there information that you can share about how people can contact you or people that are interested about this to program for, for, them, for people that they know or, or other people in the community that may be interested in a service like this? Sure, so we encourage everybody to reach out so that a team member can walk them through the enrollment process or even just answer questions. We're very happy to talk about um, what we do with folks who are even just sort of exploring it. Um, they can do that by calling us at 781 863-1166, uh, dialing extension 104, that's our referral line, or checking out our website at elderdayservices.org. Great, and you'll, um, you know, as you uh, move in and launch, we'll, I'm sure you'll be providing more information to Sharon and others uh, upstairs to how to uh, let people know more about what services you're providing. But it's really great to have you um, as part of the complex over there. It sounds like a, a nice fit. Um, to continue to help provide a continuum of, of care for, for people in our community. And, and uh, it's nice to see uh, this collaboration that you formed before you even got here uh, with Sharon and others uh, in the building. So nice to meet you and, and thank you very much for being on the program. Thank you for having me. Wait a minute, are you on the COA board? Is that I what am I'm hearing? Also, I am also on the COA board of directors and very happily on the COA board of directors. So I get a chance to work with Sharon closely with that. I didn't know that. Right here in Acton? Mm -hmm. I, am okay, a, I am a very proud Acton resident, so thrilled okay, that well, we're going to have one of our own programs in my own backyard, so to speak. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't know that, but that's even, <laughs> uh, it's even more interesting. So thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Um, I think that wraps up the program. I didn't see any calls come in during the show. Does anyone on the uh, call here have any questions for each other? Do you want to try to get Felipe back? Or how, how do you want to, how do you want to close this out? Are we good? All right. Well, let's uh, let's try to enjoy the weekend and we will see you all uh, next week. Thank you all.